next one is, let me make sure I get this spelt right. It's Drakkar Skull Taker, I think. And this is called Drake and Pride. Now, you'll remember the first plot we went to was a kind of a Draken village kind of theme. Well, look at this one. Look how impressive that is. Similar in um, the idea, but approached very differently. Now, again, this one isn't exactly um, complete. You'll see what I mean about that here shortly. But I love the work put in on the landscaping. Again, I'm a big fan of those that can handle it really well. Um, but look at all those stones, those lovely, lovely stones. So much work went into putting those in. I mean, they're not like perfectly lined up to make it look like it's like an actual brick wall. It just looks like it's been actually, you know, painstakingly <laughs> put together piece by piece. Um, so you have this cliff, I don't know if it's exactly a village, but more like a castle. That's what it reminds me of, kind of, a uh, Draken um, stronghold of some sort. Um, and then down here in the lower canyon valley area um, is the village. So you'll see that they've used some of the new um, Protostar Insta Hills for parts of their landscaping. Which is always nice a little bit of you know ground cover change using lots of their little deserty uh, plants and things you've got uh, lots of use of the tufts of grass again they're using that to kind of block off pieces that they don't want to look um you know it's a little overgrown in this particular area but like that's a little miniature olive tree there to make it look like a little bush And then you've got these little huts here. Now they do have a few fab kits. They've got this one here and then the gold miners um, there. But then they have these little huts. And look at the huts. It's um, The roofs are made out of um, uh, decking pieces, like you see the corners here, um, trimmed with fences. The Draken fences are, or, and falcon fence posts. So you've got a lot of the horns. It's really spiky looking. You've got a lot of the um, Draken um, spears and fence posts with the spears. So again, it's very Draken-y in, in their theme. I say Draken, it may be Draken. I, I say Draken, Draken though. Um, and then covered in the, the furs, the rugs. Give it that, you know, very barbaric look. Um, the base of it is um, the Draken fences. Um, that's the fences that have like the little skulls intermittently. You see one there. Uh, real good for um, uh, if you're wanting some kind of a, a brick type of texture. Um, that's a really good uh, item for that. Um, this here is, I believe it's the Lop uh, stone oven thing. Um, and they're using that for both. You can see it outside and inside. So it just kind of works really good. But yeah, look at that. A couple of uh, uh, pillars and uh, decking pieces for the little awning and staircase into the house. A little ramp. And it looks like um, Draken walls. It looks a little marbly there and draken pillars for the trim they're really stuck with the draken theme there's a lot of actual draken decor that is being used here even the doors are draken and see this is what i mean by it's a little empty but i suspect if you you know take a closer look at the landscaping that they've done so far i have no doubt that they probably um ran out of space um, you'll see what I mean as we get closer into the actual um, cliff side there. But uh, this could be uh, the medicine man's hut, a uh, little meeting hut, uh, could be the community kitchen. 
Um, it just could be a personal residence for all I know. Hey Faye, good morning. Glad you could join us and anyone else that happens to be lurking around. Again, same thing over here. But I really love the construction of the, you know, we don't have a lot of um, pre-made building type of things. It, it reminds me, I mean, how fun would it be to use this as one of the CBDC like modular houses have this little hut that you got to decorate and keep it with the theme of being, you know, Drake and, and that would be kind of fun. And that's a good example of how that would be used. So yeah, um, there is a uh, bunker house, but I, yeah, if I remember right, it was empty, and it is. Who knows what they might be planning to put there, um, if anything at all. Maybe they're just going to slap a rock on it and call it good. Um, you can see that they've found some of these darker stones. If you're wondering where those come from, that's just those um, fence posts. It's the same things that they used here on the houses. It's just upside down and hiding the uh, spears. It's this piece here. Uh, the spears and everything, they just turned it upside down and they're just using the dark stone. Um, most of these canyons, the canyon walls are um, individual gray stones. You can see just how many they've used just piece after piece after piece. They've added in little tufts of grass. Um, they've used the, the hills, um, the Protostar Insta Hills, to help kind of build it up a little bit. But a good majority of it along here is just lots and lots and lots of rocks. Um, some dead trees. Here's, uh, did you see the little white puffs? That's the snowy hills there just to kind of help extend it. You know, maybe the the protostar insta hill only went so far and they needed just a little bit to kind of tuck it in. <clears throat> so we're gonna walk our way up. You see there's a little camp here. They got one of those new um Draken uh NPCs just chillaxing on the bench there. Again, notice all the rocks here. It's really hard to see in the lighting, I know, but uh, one, you know, bigger rocks for the pathway. Snowy hills to give some dirt here and there. And then trimmed with smaller rocks along the side. All those rocks. Little bits of fencing here, uh, just to kind of, it makes it look a little bit run down, um, not uh, particularly well kept. Like it was, it used to be a really big fortress kind of thing and it's just kind of gone in disrepair. You'll see what I mean here very soon. But I love how it just kind of zigzags back and forth as you progress up. And as you get higher, you start having the uh, the Draken fencing become the walls. So you got smaller stones. Again, lots of the um, Draken fence posts so that you get those dark rocks and the spikes from the spears. And then you come upon the main entrance. Now you'll see that it's kind of a little open and not fully formed and that's my indication that they are not done. Now I say that and yet um, in certain places you'll see that it looks purposefully um, unfinished. Let's see if I can show you what I'm talking about here. Like here's a path and you've got the staircase here but like how this is kind of like dangling as if it's not quite attached anymore. So if you hop on this, then you get so it looks kind of a, a bit of both, as if they're 
they maybe run out of decor count, but also want it to be kind of like a, an abandoned Draken fortress of some kind. Um, compound, I don't know what you want to call it. But you can see that they're using oversized um, Draken vendors for parts of it. That adds that extra bit of fur. Things here's here's another one here. That's what this trim is. This wood and everything. That's all that vendor. Again, great shot for down below. If you have a little village scene, look at all the trees that they're using. So we're coming in this interest way down there. Just shows you how high up we are. Let's see, I don't know if I can get over there. Ooh. Again, another uh, vendor thing being used. Um, these, I can't remember what they're called. One of the Brasiers, Brasiers, whatever, what the, whatever they're called. Um, part of this, I think, is the staircase. They've turned it so that the horns are showing a little better. Same way here. Draken uh, floors for, well, the floors. Uh, this right here, you can see that's upside down uh, Draken fences. So you're getting that funky um, little texture there. Yeah, that's those staircases. They've just used them as like little screens. So it's like the little place where, you know, maybe this is where they like shoot out at their enemies or whatever. But again, it feels very incomplete once you get up in here. Like here's a nice little, like the shortest hallway ever. <laughs> I don't know where it's supposed to go, if it's supposed to go anywhere, but you can kind of see like how they put some of it together. There's a lot of staircases here. Another section. Look at all that. All of this part here, that's those staircases. Again, they're using the bottoms of it. And it looks, uh, it's got that nice little design on it. Um, and then very metallic looking. It's a great building block. You know, if you can hide all the other junk that you don't want showing. But in this case, it looks really nice. Draken pillars for the accents covering up the trim. Again, it just looks a little dilapidated in parts, like part of the staircase is missing here. This looks like maybe where the the ruler of the clan or whatever the clan leader would come and kind of wave his hand to his peons or whatever. See what a great shot. Get from up here. Kind of and look at all those stones. Like I said, it would not surprise me at all if they are at their cap already just with this little bit that they've done because there's just so many pieces being used to make the structure I mean for anyone that's put together a custom house you know how quick that can be eaten up really really fast and for this it's probably just as complex with all of the stones the walls the, the pillars Staircases they're using. It's just a lot of pieces. Hey, ghost. Glad you could join us. 
so yeah, uh, probably one of my favorite um, Draken uh, places for sure. Just even again, it's not complete, but I love the the idea, the concept behind it, and a lot of the the approach to how they built that. I'm I would probably cheat and use bigger rocks instead of using such the fine ones, but then you lose that that nice texture that comes with it. But you know, if you're pinched for decor, um, bigger sometimes is better. It's cheaper at least, and, and you know, as far as space goes, if you're pinched for space, um, it's just that kind of you have to decide. You know, what are you going to aim for more? Um, it's just one of those things that you know you really hope that eventually they will expand um, the decor count limits in some form or fashion. Um, to provide us a little bit more flexibility when it comes to this this building. I mean, maybe they don't want really want the the bunker house. They just want to build up above, but they have to have the bunker house to get rid of that cruddy looking construction site. And um, yet we're we're forced to split the twenty five hundred and twenty five hundred. It would be great if we could go ahead and say, well, we don't want 2,500 on the interior. We just want to put all 5,000 on the exterior. Wouldn't that be awesome? That would be great. What's my level? Uh, my level is max level. Um, but uh, we don't really do the leveling and, and uh, combat stuff on this channel. Housing, we're level 14 and we're good. <laughs> As long as we get to that, unless you got the jump start pack, you can start at level three with housing. So we're just kind of. <laughs> Do you seriously, Poi? Gosh, I think I have three level 50s, maybe. And uh, I think the rest of them are. I, I think I have like the majority are level three. And then I have maybe a handful that are in the 20s. But I don't really play them all that much, so it's, you know, one of those. Okay, so our last plot for today, which I cannot promise we'll actually get to see at all, <laughs> is um, Kutoa Steck, I think is how you pronounce it. It's K-O-O-T-O-A-S-T-E-K-H. Kutoa Steck. It's a jumping puzzle. It's called Bar of Beyond, I think. It's something like bar meat or, or whatever. I'm not sure what that's supposed to be. Um, the enclosure is those lovely Draken fences, kind of boxing us in at the entrance. And uh, you go up the ramps, come out to this strange little, con you know, tunnel bridge area you've got these little throbbing eggs this is like your clue as to your path um, just to kind of give you a start on this um, this is like your starting line come out of the gate and then you see the arrow and it's pointing you in the direction and you'll notice that there's glass lots and lots of glass that's to encase you in the certain zones um, so that you can't progress until you actually bypass the jumping puzzle parts. That's why I say we may not get to visit most of this plot, um, but you can see from a distance there's um, all kinds of little uh, like mazy parts down here with the fencing. This looks to be like the little awards room where you, once you've completed it, you can get your little bit. It almost looks like a little play stage as well. I look, I see like some clouds and things. Um, there's uh, tunnels over here, um, and I believe there's an actual house on the plot. Yeah, right there. But again, we may not get to see it because I may not even make it past the first part of the puzzle. <laughs> I'm going to try, but uh, no guarantees. Only a level 5 medic. Wow. Are, are, did you choose medic because you want to heal? I just, I like DPS myself. The healing and the tanking is too nerve wracking for me. Yeah, boy, that's usually the only reason I play anything, you know, 
work on leveling my alts up is because I need access to a specific decor and then I have to get busy on that. That's one of the reasons why I really should take a look at those. Um... See, I can't even get up the first little pillar there. Good grief. Um, but you can see the little throbbing eggs are as well on all of the little platforms. It's just, again, it's a clue to kind of show you your path. Um, but yeah, if I can uh, avoid it, I avoid the leveling. Because, um, you know, I like the questing and stuff, but once you do it on one character, if unless you go on a different faction or something, or if there's a lot of, um, not it's not totally linear, there's a lot of options out, then I might not be so, feel too repetitive, but after a few characters, it gets kind of old for me, so I tend to avoid it at all costs if I can. And just out of necessity, I will go and do that. Okay, this one's tricky because this little spike here will boot you off to the side. Sorry about the camera swinging around, but that's me trying to not fall off the stupid pillars. Oh my gosh, I think that's the farthest I got so far. <laughs> so your next clue, you got the arrow uh, again pointing you up the path. So make our way. Uh, this makes me so nervous. I'm going to fall off of this thing. Oh, see? I'm going to like just... Oh, that's going to be so bad. <laughs> anyway, you come up on the shrooms. And again, you have the little pulsating eggs to let you know that you need to jump from uh, sphere to sphere to get to the tube over there. This is not going to be fun. Ugh. Got me all. I'm all <laughs> feeling it. I have no idea what you're talking about, Rick. <laughs> Thank you for joining, though. Um, maybe Poi or somebody else will understand that. Turn off while moving. Click left, right, mouse button. And still activate. I have no idea. Do you, you're checking with the camera? Well, uh, the last XP weekend we had, Tiki, I completely um, missed it. Um, I forget what it was. Either I was sick or we were busy um, with family stuff. Um, but, uh, yeah, I try to take advantage of those when they're around. But again, it's just kind of, uh, it's one of those things I say, I'm going to do it, I'm going to do it, and I never do. Yeah, I know, Cheeky. I could have. <laughs> it, that's how I do it, Poi. All my movement is on the mouse. Oh, see, my strafe and stuff is all the thumb buttons on my Razer mouse. I don't use any kind of keys for my movements, uh, except uh, the space bar for jumping. And hey, sign. Um, yeah, uh, again, the jumping puzzles and the hover parks and stuff are really great for those that love exploring. We actually have jumping puzzles and stuff that are actually in the game if you're like um, an explorer path. That would be awesome for, um, uh, for those that like that kind of thing. These kind of plots are ideal. Um, I'm just horrible at it, so uh, I tend to avoid them like the plague because, again, I'm so horrible at it. I just I don't want to even 
embarrass myself, but I'm toughing it out today. I like this. I got the little water snaking through here. This makes me nervous though, because I've been to a few plots like this that have like the glass missing, and then I fall through and it freaks me out. I think this is the farthest I've ever been on this particular plot, so I'm I'm a little scared. Okay, so the arrow is pointing. I just go down. See, that's just scary. Look at that. Uh. <laughs> oh my gosh. What? I'm out to like a little a little weird thing. Oh dear. Okay, I must be in the maze now. Or maybe not. Yeah, where am I? Let's see. Yeah, I think this is like the maze or something. Uh I'm not very good at those either. <laughs> but for those that like these kind of puzzles, I know there's a few um, builders that will have little games. Um, while we can't actually award prizes directly from completing a particular puzzle, um, they'll be on the plots and say, you know, first person to get to the end, um, I'll award X amount of plat or something. I've seen that done quite a bit. Um, but, uh, yeah, these things just kind of, I usually end up getting lost. <clears throat> it looks like they've just used mostly, um, the Draken fences for all of these, uh, the, the walls here. Am I just going in circles? I feel like I'm going in circles here. Oh, look at the carrot. No. Poor thing. That's so sad. <laughs> okay, that was a dead end corner. I see they didn't put any knives through these things, the grouse towers. I'm all sad about the carrot. Okay, we've been by him before. See, I am going in circles. Er. I love this decor, mostly for the orange flowers, because we don't have a lot of orange plants. But I hate the bones attached to it. I see here's that cave thing that somebody used as an actual house, and they've used it as like this little weird coconut monkey hut. <laughs> How creepy is that? That would be good for a... Shade Z plot. Oh, did they know I was coming to visit so they posed that one? Well, that's kind of mean if that's true. <laughs> Those are just kind of creepy, the little coconut monkey things. Got like a. Uh, these, these are like little natives. They got their little um, poison darts that they're throwing at you. Okay, I don't think I want to go up that. That leads us back to the front. <laughs> Look what they did here. Kind of made her like um, the native queen or whatever. Got her little headdress on there. That's actually kind of clever. Did I come out of the maze? Now I'm con I'm confused again. Okay, that's where I started. That's um, that's those pillars that were bad. I don't know if the goal is to get to the house or what. Here's the uh, brow stars again. These, what is the banana doing there? The giant banana. They could fit like five of me inside that thing. 
Um, these here, for those of you that haven't come across them yet, these uh, you unlock if you complete the, I think it's called the Alpha Sanctum instance. You get one for finishing it, and then you also unlock the rest on the vendor, housing vendor, which I think was a really smart way of doing those. Yeah, Tori Maiden, that's probably what she was. Lots of eggs and spider goo. There's just all sorts of weird things in here. It's a cage. This is a very bright light source. Um, I've seen a few people use them pretty cleverly, like for stages and things, if they're wanting to light up um, like a dance floor or something. It kind of gives a little bit of like a strobe light effect as well. Um, I just find it a little mind, you know, headache inducing if I stare at it too long. Uh, but really good for um, those that are working on like uh, Shades Eve plots and things. Okay, so there's a glass barrier there. And go up that. I think we've kind of gotten off the path here. Oh, wait, wait. What do we got? What do we got? This is where I would end up because I like fall and, and hurt myself. Notice the bookshelf, it comes fully stocked by hand. It doesn't come that way. They actually put all those pieces in and even lean some of them over. They had to put all of these individually in that box as well. That's some patience there. No pun intended. Oh, look, did you see what they did? They made it look like they're throwing the ball to each other. Like volleyball or something, beach ball. That's, you know, again, we're kind of like staging scenes um, sometimes. You have to look at it that way. We've seen that with people doing like, um, like a space battle. They'll have like the ships kind of aimed at each other. And like, I've even seen a few actually use decor pieces as if it's bullets that are in motion to somebody, you know, to the other opposing uh, group. And this is a good example of doing that with the ball. It's, you know, it's like, it's like a snapshot of a scene. Um, obviously it would be more fun if we could get that ball that, what is it? The, is it the falcon, the little bird people? Um, that uh, have that ball that bounces to and fro from them, that would be fun to be able to get a hold of. So here's a nice little waterfall area. Again, winding rivers, waterfalls, and then just lots and lots of rocks. Uh, trying to see what kind they're using. It looks like some of the swirly stones and the gray stones. There's even a giant um, Oh, what is that thing called? The barnacle weed? Looks like we're entering the next section of this. We made it all the way around on the base. Up the ramp we go. Again, this is just the boardwalk um, with uh, decking railing to trim it off. This is where the party is happening. I love this part here, um, the little parasol thing. Basically, that's one of those. It's actually the hanging um, ornament, the little uh, protostore ornament from uh, the Winterfest. And they've used that as a topper for, um, it's not only being used as the base, the string, but the, the top the bottom of it is the top of the decoration for the parasol so it makes it look like a lit up kind of uh, little thing it's a cute idea yes it does have a little bit of motion because it's a hanging item it's kind of affected by the wind but fortunately it's not like the balloon it's not going you know vertical oh is it the pell the pell yeah I knew it was, it was the bird people, that's mostly what I call them, but yeah, the pill, you are right. Um, they have that off in uh, uh, 
the defile um, where you go and do the the grove the guardians of the grove event i usually see them when i pass they're throwing that ball back and forth but yeah they're elsewhere too um, but the base of it is uh, one of those um, gear lamps I definitely hope that they bring in more of those candy buckets this year. I'm going to force myself to stock up on those things because I was really regretting not getting more than one. I only got a single one when they were out last year and I thought, no, I'm not going to need that at any time. And those would come in handy for some other things. I just wasn't using my brain. So again, this is kind of an indication that you're coming into a new section. And this brings you to the dance floor. Notice they're using different shades of glass. There's green and blue and red. It's the unframed glass layered up as well, probably to give it a little bit more brightness, a little bit more frosty looking. Um, but it's a clever way of bringing some color to the dance floor. I guess they watched me running around here like a nutball. Notice they got the, um, the NPCs in different sizes as well. I've heard some people saying that they've had them reset. Um, usually I think just placing them again, like just moving them slightly and placing them again fixes that, but there's always the risk that they'll change on their own. Um, and of course the stage is uh, one of the Caroline microphones um, with that uh, Marauder emblem being used as the stage itself. Nifty idea. Here's the award stage. I guess you come up here if you win first, second place. I'm sure it's like. They might have used it as a guild thing to come and, and run the course to see who can get through it first. Like I said, that was kind of like the opening gate that we come out of. And then once you're out, you know, whoever can get to the end first wins. Um, so this is just a combination of, um, I think it's the hanging portrait. Uh, they've got it covered up with another item uh, to kind of, I think it's just inset on the Dominion scanner so you don't see the lady's face. And then, of course, um, the cylinders and those uh, charming bars. There's like two per pillar. And then you come up here, and that's where you take your little screenshot. I won. Again, look at the, uh, the floor. It's... A lot of mashing of those um, decking pieces. They give it that little hatched pattern. And over here, again, it looks like a little play set um, where they put on a performance. They got like the clouds made out of um, puffy. Uh, snow clumps the strange little setup again it just kind of is reminiscent of like a, a a guild thing that they put on put a little stage enact the play or something yeah You're wondering what these are. Those are the Winterfest fences. I'm sure a lot of people will be stocking up on those again this year if they're available. I, I keep saying if they're available because there's really no guarantee that they will be. Um, I hope so, but there's just really no telling. I'm trying to figure out how do we get to... I guess i got to go back into the... I don't know how to get to the house. Did I miss the turn? Uh, 
our path here now. I don't think this goes around, so I have to go back into the maze, I guess. Drat. Um, some moldy cheese. <laughs> they put the green grass on the cheese to make it moldy. That's pretty funny. Well, how in the world can I go all the way around with this super drat? I didn't want to go back in here. Let's see. I'm going to try and get us to the house. I don't know. It might be empty for all I know, but I'm going to try and get us there. Oh, there we are. I guess I just walked right past it the last time. Let's let's look over here. I know there was a little enclosure for some rouse tower. Now they got a little corral here. Somebody's up to some mischief back here with a little bomb set at the back of the house. And I have no idea why there's toilet paper on the bench there. That's a little odd. Carcasses. Yum. So I think we've seen everything except the inside of the house. So let's, let's see if there's anything worth looking at in here. Well, there's a big wad of intestine hanging from the ceiling. That's worth it, right? <laughs> yeah, the podiums were nice. Um, those uh, uh, charming bars are really lovely. It's just they're a little too dominion-y for me. I, I tend to not use them very often. I'm curious as to why they've doubled the stairs up. It seems like a unnecessary step, no pun intended, but it looks like they've doubled it up to, I don't know, maybe just make it look a little beefier. It's a nice smooth stepping, um, but the, uh, the steps look not precisely laid out um, as if it's, you know, put together with Katias or anything. So kudos to them on making it, you know, fit so smoothly. Uh, as far as the step, you know, a lot of people, when they do their own steps without actually calculating numbers and everything, um, I tend to get stuck and I have to like jump up the steps to get up them. But this uh, is a really smooth walk. Um, the upper floor, you can see, is mostly decking pieces. Same with the railing. And, uh, brings you up to the bedroom. I would really love these pillows as individual bits in the blanket. That would be great. I guess that's their toilet. The bucket and the wad of paper. Ew. That's au naturel. <laughs> Yeah. And then downstairs is a little, kind of like a lounge area. Got a pile, lots of little monies and, and uh, drinks and stuff. Again, uh, jumping puzzles and such aren't really my thing, but I know there are hands of them. Um, it's not that I'm, you know, trying to be mean, but usually it's, I just can't complete them. So it's, there's usually no point in attempting because you don't get to see it all. Thankfully, I managed to, to make most of the jumps relatively smoothly. 
Um, I, I think I did a lot better than I did this morning when I was testing it out, so that was, that's a plus. Um, but uh, yeah, there's certainly a challenge not only for the person visiting, but I'm sure it takes time and testing um, for those that create them for their visitors. Um, because like using the glass to kind of encase certain zones uh, is one tool I've seen some use. Um, others, they're mindful of those of us that are a little less um, athletic. Uh, they will make little shortcuts like ramps that you can go up to kind of catch up where you fell, um, that kind of thing. Um, they're... Uh, are those that uh, strive to make it almost impossible. You know, it's like super challenging. I've seen a few that have used it um, in ways that you actually have to use some of your uh, movement spells to actually get to certain distances because the jumps are a little extra wide um, so that you can't just simply double jump across. Um, Others have had like mazes where there's multiple uh, entrances and then you have to just kind of figure out which way is the right way. Um, I do know that there have been a few that have been utilizing Katia's um, interactables uh, feature uh, on her add-on to add even more um, complexity to their puzzle plots um, by um, creating like trap doors um, or like little uh, puzzles, like switch puzzles, where they have to like get the right combination so that it opens up a new area. Um, in fact, I saw, um, I think it was Ku from Ayuni Ku and Crew, that they do their house tours on Monday evenings um, on uh, their Twitch channel. Uh, they were trying to showcase Ku's plot. He's got it all set up um, as like a, a lot of traps and things like that, but he unfortunately wasn't able to get it to work um, properly um, at the time of the stream um, but it was just an indication that people are using those interactables for more than just opening and closing non-interactable doors or switching on and off their lights and things like that um, people's using them in much more ingenious ways uh, as far as uh, trying to get their plot to be a little bit more um, lively and as if your character is actually affecting their environment. So that's that's really fun. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today. Um, again, remember we do this every Wednesday for the house tours. Uh, we alternate between the factions. Um, it's always Jabbit EU. Um, as yet, I have not meandered my way over to NA side as far as house tours go. Now, as Poi just mentioned, we do have the CBDC that we do every month. We announce a theme at the beginning of the month, and then we do uh, a showcase stream at the end of the month showing what everybody builds. Um, that is actually open to both regions. Um, I do have characters on NA. I just don't uh, actively go and tour the houses there at this time. Um, but if you'd like to join us, um, be sure and note that down. Every Wednesday we come and uh, check out some houses. Uh, depending on the size and complexity of them, we may only visit a couple uh, on a given week, but sometimes it could be as many as five, like today I believe it was. So yeah, um, always a pleasure to have you guys join me during these um, little tours. I love the company, um, appreciate the follows, the tweets, the retweets the votes, and uh, the, just the general support. Um, tomorrow we'll be going back to my alts plot, um, Turville, so that we can continue working on this month's CBDC stuff that I've been doing for that one. Um, this month's theme is, of course, Pokemon. Uh, we've been having a lot of fun with making all the little critters. I've been doing a few paintings. We've even built um, our version of Ash Ketchum's house. Um, and tomorrow we'll be working on a new uh, Pokemon. I believe it's going to be a water type. I've got him in the pool, a little pond there, and uh, started on him, but I haven't touched it since I showed you um, the other day. So should be interesting to see if I can actually fashion it to, to look like what I want it to be. It's going to be tough, but we're going to try it. Um, 
and then we'll probably continue on with that Friday as well. Uh, next week I don't have any specifics planned other than Wednesday's house tours. Um, just remember we do have the CBDC showcase coming up on the 29th. And um, so if you have your projects uh, that you'd like to be included in the showcase, it uh, doesn't matter what faction, doesn't matter what region, um, if you'd like me to include it um, for this month's CBDC, uh, just uh, let me know the character name, the region, the faction, and what it is that you're wanting me to check out, and we will make sure we include that in the showcase on the 29th. Um, thank you all again for joining and uh, hope you had a good time. Hope you uh, come up with some ideas, something spurred your imagination, um, whether it be, you know, maybe one of you, you want to build your own jumping puzzle, you know, that would be certainly something to, to fiddle with at some point. Um, not me, because I'm pretty poor at that anyway. I'd have to like have ramps everywhere because it would fall off on everything but um, for others it might be a pretty good challenge um, or just general landscaping that kind of thing but uh, hopefully you got some good ideas um, from today's tours so yeah hope you guys have a great day and I'll see you later bye bye